In this video, we're looking at network performance. Now, of course, we all like super fast internet speeds, particularly if we're playing network games or we're watching the latest HD videos over the internet. So, we need to know what was meant by network speed and be aware of the term bandwidth and also name different factors that can affect the performance of a network and hopefully pick up a few tips as to how you can possibly tweak the speed of your network as well. So, how do we define network speed? Well, usually, when you are buying a broadband connection, you will get the service provider to provide you with some information to say how fast it's likely to be. And usually you find it's measured in MBPS, capital M, little b, little p, little s. And that st stands for millions of bits per second. So that's the number of bits of data, those zeros and ones, how many of those they can get to you in a second. Now, of course, they'll only give you the average rate. Okay, they're not going to say you'll definitely always get 50 million bits per second because there's different factors that influence speed. It might be the number of people that are on the network. It might be where you're trying to download that data from. If you're trying to get that from halfway around the world somewhere and there's a slow connection somewhere between you and the other person, it's going to be a little bit slower than that. But generally, that network speed is measured in millions of bits per second. You might sometimes also see this MBPS, capital M, capital B, PS. That's megabytes per second. And one megabyte is equal to eight million bits. And then of course you might have giga, tera, peta, and so on. But let's keep things simple and just talk about millions of bits per second. So this is how network speed is defined. It's a number of bits that we can transfer over the network in a second. So what does bandwidth mean? Well, bandwidth is exactly what we've just been talking about. How many, uh, how many bits of data can you transfer in a given amount of time? And you can think about bandwidth as being the lanes on a motorway. The more lanes that you have, the more bits can travel at the same time, or the more cars can travel at the same time. So the more bandwidth you have, it's like having more, more lanes on a motorway and you can fit more traffic down at the same time. So that's what we mean by bandwidth. So what can affect our network performance? Well, it could be the type of connection that we're using. So whether we're using, say, Wi-Fi, 4G, a wired connection, a wireless uh, connection. There's so many different types of, of network connection. It's unbelievable. It could just be the network traffic, the number of people that are on the network. Or it could just be the signal strength, particularly in the case of wireless networks. So we're going to look at some of those factors now. The type of connection, the network traffic, and uh, the signal strength. So type of connection. Let's see if by the end of this we can name some different types of connection and then explain how that affects the performance of a network. So as I was saying before, there's all sorts of kinds of connections. Your mobile phone might have 3G, 4G, or 5G if you're lucky. So these are, that's a, that, the name of a connection technology. If you're using a desktop or a laptop or a Chromebook type device, then it's probably using Wi-Fi. In fact, your mobile phone might even use Wi-Fi as well. Also sometimes known as 802.11. It just rolls off your tongue. Now your house might connect to the internet via what's known as an ADSL connection or a DSL connection. That's an asymmetric digital subscriber line from what I remember. Or you might even have a cable connection or some kind of fiber optic cable connection if you're really lucky. So what difference do all these connections have? What's the difference between say a 4G connection and a uh, and a wired connection. Well, we don't need to know the details about all of these connections as such. We just need to be aware of some general, some general rules, some general comparisons. So this diagram over here, I've got it in front of me now, just shows the relative difference in speed between the different connections. Fiber optics there, shooting out ahead. You can't get anything quicker than fiber optic. That's because with a fiber optic cable, the data is sent using light signals, right? And light travels super, super fast, faster than electrons can travel down a cable, which is in the second place. And then we've got 4G, which of course is a wireless technology, which you use with your mobile phone, not quite so quick. Satellite technology, 
again, not so quick. ADSL, yes, that is a wired connection, but it's based on pretty old technology, so it's relatively slow. But usually, for usually good, good enough. Good enough. If you just got one person in the household doing a bit of light internet surfing, it's it's going to be plenty quick enough. So there's different types of cable that might be used in a network, and they're all slightly different. Let's just have a brief look at these. So. In your network at school, you might have seen cables connecting to computers together, which are called Ethernet cables, or you could pronounce it Ethernet if you like, it doesn't really matter. So that's essentially one big cable that has lots of little cables inside. And all those cables are insulated in plastic, not great for the environment, and they're also twisted around each other, and that helps to prevent electromagnetic interference. So if you have, for example, a power cable right next to your network cable, it prevents the, the radiation from that power cable affecting the data that goes along the network cable. If you use a satellite connection, you might be aware of what we call a coaxial cable, which looks something like this. So you have um, two bits of copper and some insulation. So this is, as I said before, can be used for radio type signals and in particular satellites. Now the exciting one is this one, fiber optic. optic. You might have heard of companies laying out uh, fiber cables so that different areas can get connected to the internet and have a really good, a really super fast internet connection. So a fiber optic cable is essentially the gold standard. If you can get that, fantastic. But usually you have to pay a little bit more money for it. So generally, what kind of connection do you think is quickest? A wired connection? or a wireless connection. Generally speaking, wired connections are always going to win hands down. Right? With a wired connection, it's a direct connection. It's also a lot more secure. But with wireless, it's putting out radio waves and they travel all over the place. They bounce off walls. And the, the, uh, the way that technology works, the data just cannot compete with a wired connection. And one example of a type of wired connection Hopefully the one that you probably remembered is fiber optic. Let's think about network traffic. So as we've mentioned before, bandwidth is about the number of bits that can be sent over a network in a given amount of time, usually one second. So if you've got an eight megabits per second connection, you can transfer eight million bits per second, on average, of course. So the more bandwidth we have, the more data that can be transferred. So usually when you sign up to the internet, sometimes, well, usually, sometimes, sometimes you get an option as to the speed that you want, and usually you have to pay more money if you want a faster internet connection. But also if you think about it, the number of people that are connected to the internet network can also impact upon the speed. Right, so I don't know about you, at um, Christmas time, you might have had lots of people in your household using your network, trying to watch a video in their own room, being unsociable, perhaps, and everyone's trying to use a network at the same time. Now, of course, if that happens, it's a bit like having lots of cars on the road at the same time. It gets really, really busy. And with videos, if, if you're trying to stream videos, what can sometimes happen is you end up with distorted sound, the video quality is not quite where you want. It might stop every so often as it's buffering, as it downloads a few seconds before it plays it, and then that repeats. Or the video might just generally stutter along. And sometimes that can just be caused by the speed of the internet connection and the number of people who are trying to use it at the same time. Sometimes it can happen in schools as well, where everyone's just trying to go on the internet to download something at the same time. And of course, if you've got more people, then they take up all the bandwidth that's available, so it's going to slow down the network connection. So finally, let's look at signal strength. Now this applies mainly to wireless networks. It can apply to wired networks as well, but we're looking at it in terms of wireless networks. So what can affect the strength of the signal that comes out from a wireless network, and what can we do about it? So. The further we are away from a wireless access point, the weaker the signal is going to be. So that's that's one distance. Right? Secondly, you've got interference. 
So um, when I was in London last using um, using a Wi-Fi network, you just like turn on Wi-Fi on your phone and then it's like lists 20, 30 odd wireless networks that are in the area. And it's quite amazing how they all still manage to work. But all those different networks can sometimes cause interference. And you might even get interference from a microwave that's in your house. Every time you turn the microwave on, the internet goes down. That's, that's, that's also quite possible. Obstacles, like, like um, big heavy walls, can cause problems. And also the, the type of signal that's been sent out, that can also affect the speed of your inter internet. So let's look at these in a little bit more detail. So signal type, I don't know if you knew this, but with Wi-Fi, you can use either a 2.4 gigahertz um, signal or if you've got more of a modern Wi-Fi setup you can use a 5 gigahertz um, setup so the signal travels at a different frequency either 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz now 5 gigahertz is great because it carries more data so it works quicker but the problem is a 5 gigahertz signal can't penetrate through walls quite so easily. So the higher the frequency the more data you can carry but it doesn't go as far. So if perhaps you're sat upstairs in the attic somewhere and your wireless access point is down in the, um, in the basement somewhere and you can't get a good connection, one um, something that you might want to do is just try and change the frequency and see if that helps or if not use a wired connection um, instead if that's at all possible. Obstacles. Again if you're upstairs and the wireless access point is downstairs that signal might have to go through the ceiling, go through walls so you might not have a great signal and then that impacts upon the speed of your internet connection. So typical solutions is to either have another access, wireless access point. I know a little while ago I got a Wi-Fi extender so I could sit outside in my garden and you can use the um, wireless access have wireless access um, while sitting outside in the garden whereas before I just couldn't get a signal at all it was just too far away I had to go through too many walls in order to to get there in some households it might be possible to actually move the wireless access point so um, so if it was moved to a more centralized position then more people would be able to get uh, a better um, connection or again use a wired connection instead if that's possible Interference, as I mentioned before, believe it or not, can be caused by microwaves or other networks that are in the area. So how do we solve that? Well, we try and get rid of the interference if we can by turning the devices off perhaps. Or if we can't do that, then it might be possible to actually change the frequency at which the wireless access point operates at, or, or what we call a sub-frequency or better known as a channel. If we change that channel, it's possible that we can get a slightly better um, internet, um, not internet, but a network connection. And of course, that network might indeed connect to the internet. Last but not least, distance. I've already um, commented on this partly already. So the further we are away from the wireless access point, the, the weaker the signal is going to become. So if we can extend the um, wireless network by installing more extenders, fantastic. If we can move closer to the wireless access point, we're going to, going to get a better, better signal. And then ultimately, if, if none of that works, <laughs> use a wired connection instead. That's the common theme running through this. So with wireless networks, if the signal's not great, try and use a wired connection if that's practical. But if not, there's a few other tips and tricks that we've gone through which might possibly solve those issues. So, can you name some factors that affect signal strength in a wireless network? So think about distance, frequency, obstacles, interference. You might want to create a little acronym for that. It's sometimes really helpful to, to, uh, to help you to remember what you need to know. Can you remember about the different types of connection? We have wired connections and wireless connections. Wired connections are generally better. And of course, network traffic can impact upon the performance of a network as well. So hopefully, now you can discuss network performance.